Oh, it's profile time. Yay. Get on it. <laughs> Oh, it's one of the best players from the 90s. It's Rivaldo. There we go. And what? if anybody goes, oh, but he did that thing against Turkey, piss off and don't listen. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Turn off now. He wasn't, he wasn't too bad in the 2000s either. In the t- it still is. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> 40th birthday recently. Exactly. Yeah, he's still going. I'm glad you life said that. Life begins at 40. I'll tell you what, he's had such a life already. Well, he was born on the 19th of April, 1972. Five years. Just five years after the summer of love. Yeah. <laughs> Did he win the sperm race, Jim? He will have done. He would have smashed it. Yeah. <laughs> overhead kicked it. It's probably, probably, <laughs> probably, probably got awards for it. Yeah, yeah. A man who was constantly overhead kicking, as yeah. I Yeah. 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 A, a, a fantastic, phenomenal player. In his mm. pomp, it, he watching him play football was like seeing your best friend drive for the first time, because it was like... Where did, a, where did you learn that? And B, how were you allowed to do that? Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. <laughs> Three, where can I get me some of that? <laughs> it's actually really probably the closest Brazil have had to Carincha since, because he was bow-legged, yeah. wasn't he? Because he had a very, very poor upbringing. He was, he was malnourished, and he had a couple Incredibly of teeth poor. missing and stuff as well. Right. He had a really terrible, terrible sort of um, time. Yeah. And that's why he had that sort of weird bandy-leggedness. Indeed, he, he said in an interview once, um, he said, I'll never forget the hunger I used to feel as a boy. Oh. Which is which is harrowing. Yeah, yeah really here he had like a lot that. of criticism for his general attitude and his general demeanour, being quite a sort of introverted guy. And maybe it comes mm. from that. You know, but it's, yeah. it's become clear later in his career how much he loves football, though. Oh, absolutely, oh, he's, loves he's still yeah, playing yeah, at yeah. four. He's played in like he's playing you know, in Angola. Yeah, well, he's yeah. playing in Angola now. He was at Banyod Corps, wasn't he, for a bit in yeah. um, in Kazakhstan? Yeah, is that right? I'm just yeah. looking at it. No, it's Uzbekistan. No, it was Uzbekistan. Sorry. Yeah. Indeed, I mean, yeah, his childhood was 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 terrible. You know, I mean, his dad got run over and killed when he was only fifteen or something you know he used to his first local club he would have to walk 10 miles each way to training god yeah I mean he would he have a to, three hour walk <laughs> yeah <laughs> he would have to there's your cardio for the day Jesus. Yeah. Yeah. he would sell like drinks and sweets and stuff on the beach just to make a few pennies for his family you know so a terrible start to life really um but despite all this, his footballing talent managed to uh, to come through, and he was uh, signed by lower league side Santa Cruz um, in the north of Brazil. He only played four games for them, but he got six goals. <laughs> it's, it's beginning. Yeah. 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 <laughs> uh, he got noticed by Moggy Mirim in Brazil's second team. Say that again, just because it's funny. It's a good name, isn't it, Moggy Mirim? That's his hometown team, isn't it? Does, did he not get an investment involved in them? Yeah, I think, on? did, I think he later on did he not go back as a glorious role as president, president. player? Or yeah. Something? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's. Um, it, Terek Grozny esque or whatever. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, he got noticed f- playing for, for Moggy um, he, when he famously scored a goal straight from kickoff in a Sao Paulo State Championship match. Um, and it was uh, a, a goal that, as he described, changed his life. That was in, in, in April '93 because he, he was name was in the papers the next day, saying it, 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 classic Brazilian stuff. They were saying this guy scored a goal that not even Pele scored. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, but '93 was a big year for him. He got Pele's just going. Well, there was only one of them, wasn't there? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, he got a big move to Corinthians, who. Um, he played 19 league games and scored 11 goals and then the following year he went to uh, Palmeiras scoring uh, n- nearly half of his 45 league matches there he won uh, a league title and that was when people really noticed him you know and this all caught the attention of Deportivo La Coruña in Spain but before he went there though he was a part of the um, brilliant Brazil Olympic squad that finished third in the uh, Atlanta Olympic Games in 96 there were some great teams in that tournament mm. there was, we talked about it in the Carnu profile mm. obviously Nigeria won it Argentina had some we fabulous did, yeah. players yeah. but Brazil finished third and of course that's a huge disappointment for them especially I think they were 3-1 well, up against because a lot of these countries take the Olympic Games very seriously they do yeah, yeah. in terms of football that's right. ob- obviously in this country we've not really entered the team we will do in, in August but um, we've not been able to because it's Great Britain and that sort of thing but yep. in other countries very very much a big deal you know mm. and, and, and as I said it was seen as a big failure when they um, they came third and, and it was the start of a funny relationship between him and the Brazilian supporters which we'll, we'll come on to so he went to Spain uh, after the summer of 96 played for Deportivo and he was only there for a season but 22 goals in 46 appearances was, was very impressive considering it's his first season in Europe and he's still a young guy Yeah. and um, uh, Deportivo finished third that he's season he's not a striker too. by the way no, uh, no sorry I should say yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, he, yeah, some, I mean, when he went to Barcelona he was sometimes played out on the left um, but an mm. attacking midfielder yeah, yeah. He scored so many goals <laughs> yeah. for, for a player there and of course after Deportivo he went to Barcelona They, uh, the powers that be there thought we fancy a bit of this Yeah. and, and he he kind of replaced Ronaldo not in a positional sense but more in a sort of talismanic sense yeah and sort of weighing in with all the goals as well yeah I mean he was 
weirdly second top scorer. I think it, was three, it every season. Three occasions, was I think. Was was it, it, a lot. Yeah. <laughs> he replaced him in a Brazilian he sense. Yes. In a Brazi- in a, yeah, yeah. yeah, he did. Well, they've often got a big player, um, don't they, Barcelona, that that, uh, that that really is kind of like their main man. I know they've yeah, got... Yeah, a talisman. Yeah, I mean, time. obviously Messi at the moment, but it was Ronaldo, Ronaldinho. He was one of those guys, you know, mm. very much so. And mm. he wowed that place so many times at the, at the Camp Nou. And uh, my goodness, did he have a shot on him? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Like he, a driller. Yeah, you know. <laughs> but also a very deft touch. Yeah, as well. he, he just could just do everything with it. Ch- he had an excellent, really, really rapid change of direction as well. Mm. The amount of time mm. he'd, he'd go to pass or shoot, fake it, change direction. The amount of times defender would end up on his ass. Yeah, but he could sort of sort of cushion balls that were coming sort of long balls that were coming down really sort of deftly and just then absolutely thump them Th- there was a moment <laughs> almost like taking a free kick in mid air yeah. <laughs> not, even, not even that, just a layoff though he'd take it down and then he'd just spot someone and you wouldn't even see it and then yeah, this yeah. guy would just <laughs> arrive and he'd be like oh Jesus Christ yeah. oh, I've scored <laughs> <laughs> how's he done that <laughs> <laughs> um, he won the, the league in Copa del Rey in his first season and was second top goal scorer only Christian Vieri scored more than him in La Liga that season a decent start <laughs> yeah a decent a decent yeah. Start. Um, after that season, uh, along came uh, France '98, where he was with Brazil. Showed the world what he could do at the biggest stage, um, weighing with a, a few goals and assists. Scored in the group game against Morocco, but his best contribution was in the quarterfinals against Denmark. Did he not score past Schmeichel in that game? He did. Nice long range, twice. low effort. He's got mm. twice. That was the, that was his second. Brazil's yeah. third because um, Denmark put up a good fight against Brazil, and they came back to two all. And it was just a case of yeah we've got Rivaldo so yeah, we're, not, yeah, we're not having this <laughs> yeah well so. it really was that Rivaldo thought come on here we go Doof. they did that in 2002 against England as well <laughs> no, 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 no 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 but, uh, but obviously Brazil <laughs> lost in the final again it was considered a failure but that Brazil yeah. 98 side were great they really were mm. and, and Rivaldo was a big part of that um uh, back at Barcelona he was owning the new Camp uh, in 98-99 season they won the league again he was second top scorer again with 24 goals only Raul scored more goals than him in the league one more and that's, that's a proper striker yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know. I think you could describe Raul as a proper striker yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he would fit the bill there yeah, yeah that's a right. proper striker yeah. <laughs> um, 1991 FIFA World Player of the Year and the Ballon d'Or because they hadn't merged at that point um, and they also won the Cop America Brazil did 19, in 1990 he finished top goal scorer with Ronaldo on five goals imagine having those two as spearheading Attacks. Yeah. Oh god! They he scored two in the final against Uruguay. Yeah, which which is so strange. Why he's not loved by the Brazilian it's strange fans so much? Mm. But um, anyway, because he t- tends to take he tended to take the blame for a lot of those sort of disappointing yeah. um, results. Perhaps because he was he was quite talismanic. You know, I mean, they, they tend to have a, a lot of talismans at any one time in Brazil, don't they? But he really did seem to bear the brunt of it. Was it the Olympic? Defeat, I think he was. That was the first one. The limit where he was, the first was sort one. of blamed for it. And it then, never really ceased. Yeah, and well, it's then, like and you say, he, he's, qu- he's quite an aloof sort of character, and maybe that's you yeah, know, maybe well, that's he was, he was Brazilians. Maybe that's kind of true. I mean, uh, he, yeah, he's not particularly flash. He's not. He's not um, the party boy like Ronaldinho. So yeah, uh, he was from the north, which is you know quite poor and whatnot. And so the, the, those in the south, where you know you got the Rio and a few more places like that, a little bit more money. As I say, it's a little bit more um, kind of a colourful kind of lifestyle, arguably. Or maybe Salvador in the north might disagree with that. So so he was maybe considered quite boring, quite a flat personality. Yeah, and th- people didn't really in Brazil they want a bit more. They want a superstar, don't they? Yeah, yeah I well, that's dictated by the newspapers. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, so I mean, it was yeah. probably where the where the money was, where the newspapers were mm. actually written, I suppose. Yeah, it is a funny one. Um, uh, it, one of his um, best games for Barcelona was away in Milan during a Champions League match in 2000 when he got a hat trick in a three all draw, two free kicks, and a diving header. <laughs> <laughs> and that's not even the best hat trick he scored no, for Barcelona. On, <laughs> Get on he did score a couple of goals against Manchester United in the Champions League. If I may yeah. just delay that hat trick yeah. for a brief moment, do you remember that at the new Camp when uh, Cole and York scored uh, a couple of goals? And there was one goal he scored, the ball came over, and I think he did a chest up and a, and a bicycle kick it didn't quite execute it as well but he got another attempt at that yeah. it was against Valencia yeah. ladies and gentlemen now Barcelona <laughs> it was the last day of the um, I think it was 2000-2001 season it was yeah and Barcelona needed to beat Valencia to qualify for the fourth Champions League spot crazy really to think that I think well they were in real real dire straits yeah um, and, and, and he was their shining light you know sort of dragging yeah. them into there their other shining light was Patrick Cliver yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's the sort of level well, they were at back well, then. Valencia were in the Champions League spot, weren't they? And Barcelona needed to beat them to yeah. take that Valencia spot. Valencia just needed a draw. That's right. And um, Rivaldo scored 
one of the best hat tricks you'll see. Yeah, mm. he's fir- probably the best hat trick. Yeah, his like, first one is. was aesthetically. A flipping, <laughs> yeah, his first one was an absolute scud. Oh no, yeah. was it, no, was it the first one was a free kick? Yeah, and the mm. second one was a long ranger. Yeah, yeah, just and it didn't even go perfectly in the corner. It was just hit at such pace. <laughs> yeah, and Canizares, yeah, yeah, the keeper. Yeah, you know, and then it all came down to the last minute of the last game of the season, and it, De Boer was it floated the ball onto his chest. Back Chest, to goal Chested yeah. up Absolutely textbook I remember saying but that thinking, You dirty boy <laughs> <laughs> You dirty <laughs> dirty boy like, It did it, Curling an overhead kick Is ridiculous <laughs> And you know, the reason I say It's probably the best hat trick ever Is the circumstances yeah. as well Like you say Pretty much the last kick of the game <laughs> <laughs> Of the season Well Valencia are a good team Around that time They went on yeah. to the league Didn't they Under, under Benitez and stuff So you know they're, they're a decent side Oh it, it, it's one of my favourite goals of all time. Though. <laughs> yeah, it's just delicious. That ra- how dare he? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> It's he's like, got no right yeah, He's got no right To uh, shoot from it's, there It's one of those moments Where the Valencia players Would just look around At each other And look at the manager And everyone would just be like that What uh, do you want from us Yeah, yeah. Don't worry You yeah. can't defend that yeah. You know Absolutely super But again he finished Second top goal scorer In the league As we, as we said earlier 24 goals Loser. One behind Raul again that proper striker nipping in, um, but he was just capable of doing anything, wasn't he, Rivaldo? When you get to that level, mm. he's just a different. Guy. He scored a goal against uh, the halfway line. I think it was against Atletico Madrid. Um, I think that was a little bit earlier in his Barcelona career. But again, he was like, under pressure from a player. It wasn't like Beckham where he had a lot of room and he looked up and he thought, "Yeah, go on then." It mm. was. It was so much quicker. Yeah. There was no. He didn't have a run up at it. it just mm. yeah, boom, there you go. Mm. Have that. Um, so in- incredible He scored 136 goals In 253 games For Barcelona But despite this Despite all that He came under Such criticism From the Barcelona fans You know They accused him Of delivering more On a Brazil shirt And, and vice versa Brazilian fans yeah. Accused him Of delivering more On a Barcelona shirt um, he Right was... I'm off to Kazakhstan <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Sod it Yeah, yeah it Ridiculous You know <laughs> Absolutely ridiculous I mean one Spanish journalist Suggested it was because Rivaldo um, You know Never sort of Marketed himself that well He never made, did interviews much yeah. Like we said earlier um, You know Rob Smythe incidentally Did an excellent piece On Rivaldo a few years ago And sums it all up um, Quite nicely But yeah Some of the Barcelona fans That got on his back um, was, You know would, would, would blame him If they didn't win And, and Rivaldo said In an interview once After a game He said I'm not a machine I don't see why people Demand me uh, Demand more of me Than the other players I've played a lot of games Carrying an injury um, I just don't know What else I can do Yeah I would have been like Well you're <clears> decent <throat> Uh, yeah, don't I mean, worry about it mate. I've got no beef <laughs> yeah. It's not me <clears throat> it's, it's ridiculous isn't it Absolutely ridiculous Did um, people think he was Denilson? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah Could be yeah <laughs> Maybe um, The year he left Barcelona was, was 2002 <laughs> That was also the year He would uh, achieve glory for Brazil When they won the World Cup in Japan and, and South Korea He was superb in that tournament mm. Scoring in Brazil's first five games Of, of that of Marked that England tournament. Yeah most Scored a lovely games, one against England yeah. um, Belgium and, and England in the, and the game that Ronaldinho was sent off for a, a horrendous assault on England's Rose, Danny Mills. <laughs> 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 but he was, he, was, he was great in that tournament, Rivaldo. Oh, Ronaldo, Rivaldo, <laughs> and Ronaldinho up front. You know, you'd probably fancy yourself. It's not bad, is it? <laughs> no, yeah. It's not bad, these Brazilians. <laughs> yeah. um, of course, he did have his silly moment against Turkey. We can't, we can't forget that. No, what are you talking about? It was but a horrendous assault on him. <laughs> <laughs> it's lucky they got through that. <laughs> that. That was a shame, but unfortunately, nowadays, people seem to just remember that, really. Yeah, why do people hate this guy? Because it he is a brilliant. wicked animated gif, that's why, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> He's been a victim of the gif. I tell you what, when Rivaldo scored that one against England, Big Phil Scolari's given it one on the sideline. The, cam- the camera cut to it, mm. and he was going mad, and everyone was crowding around and jumping on him because he, he knew that was it. Yeah, he was like, it, yeah. You, know. you don't remember the footage, and Ericsson describes a bottle of water and such drinking from it really cut- calmly. Yeah. There's nothing from Ericsson at nah. that point. No, nah, Big Sven. Ah, <laughs> oh, Svenigans. So yeah. <laughs> So he had a fantastic 2002 World Cup And of course Brazil won the tournament In 2002 he also he signed for Milan uh, He didn't play too much for Milan It was a funny time See this I and think is where people think That his career just like nosedived no. And people kind of look at his career You know at post Barcelona And seem to judge him more on that Because he yeah. moved around a lot You know he played in Greece for a bit As we'll, we'll obviously come to him Successfully and, 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 al- and also judge him on modern Barcelona Rather than what the, the state yeah. they were in yeah. Actually played for them. yeah he played in a very different Barcelona yeah. team than what yeah. Well not very different I mean the fact they were fighting for fourth place On the last day of the season shows that Yeah Yeah um, yeah, he, he was on the bench for Milan um, during their Champions League win. So he, he has got a Champions League winner's medal, but uh, he didn't play. You know, and for a player like that, you, you want to be yeah. playing in, the, in, in those types of games. So uh, he moved on to 
Olympiakos where he won league titles and cups in a great time in Greece yeah he's, he scored a lot of goals I didn't realise quite how successful he was out there and he scored a lot of significant goals he for scored one well. in, in the cup final when he was it was an outrageous goal I mean he's, he's not far from the corner flag and he just curls it right over the key and, it, and he mm. means it it's not like yeah. a cross come shot <laughs> absolutely glorious uh, and then he moved to um, AK Athens afterwards and uh, yeah he had a good time in Greece um, then he moved to Uzbekistan he still won the league and cup in Uzbekistan <laughs> yeah. 33 league goals in 53 league games I've seen Bunyodko play not very good no I saw him play not this, now he's I, I saw him play this season they were terrible I don't know what they were like when he played for them yeah better I think it's better <laughs> <to say. laughs> yeah I'd say so yeah I'd say so he went back to Brazil after that um, as I say there was a, a, something to do with Moggy Miram again um, but then he played for Sao Paulo quite sensational yeah, I think what happened was he went back to Moggy Miram which is like his hometown club became as you said player president then I think that sort of Brazil got hold of it and realised it was actually far too good and so he went to Sao Paulo <laughs> yeah but it was it was nice actually when he, when he went back to Sao Paulo because in an interview he was asked how Brazilian players reacted to him um, when he returned home uh, to play there because Ronaldo said that he was given some real treatment as you could imagine <laughs> but Rivaldo actually said he said people want to swap shirts with me and there are players who tell me I was the best player at the 2002 World Cup but when you're out there in the middle of all that chaos, chaos um, you just have to say thanks and you're off there's no time to chat um, he, he even said as well that sometimes you'll get a player who's marking you tightly and he'll even apologise and say my coach told me to stick close to you and mark you I know you're a great player and he said but I tell him it's fine you have to do what you've got to do <laughs> <laughs> but it's nice so weird yeah, but it's nice that his fellow professionals realise that happens to me a lot when I play actually. is that yeah. true isn't it yeah, <laughs> yeah. But that's good. I mean, maybe some of the fans don't recognise it, but it seems a lot of the players do. Mm. So, so that's good. I but, think um, the players would gener generally have a, a greater appreciation of what he's doing, given that they're in the same trade. You know, yeah, trying absolutely. to do the same. You know. But, uh, yeah. How can you not? With the, what, with, it's what, Rivaldo. <laughs> yeah. People shouldn't be having a pop at it. <laughs> all of the thing, all of the ridiculous things he's done. That hat trick. Just the, the, yeah, alone. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. That, that, literally that alone. But mm. the, that's the thing with Barcelona. You have got the stats. You know, score was there the, 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 the club's top goal scorer on so many seasons they won the league they won the cup mm. all the these things he's done for Brazil you yeah. know? they won the world cup <laughs> they won the world cup they won the Copa America and he was top goal scorer in the tournament yeah, not um, good enough. No, yeah. no. <laughs> in fact, let's not put, let's not put him in. <laughs> 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 um, and then uh, he left to join a Carbu score in uh, the Angolan league. Um, all I know is he's played six games out there, five goals. Yeah, you got to love your football to be playing out in Angola. Forty years yeah. old. Them. Yes, yeah, it's surprising he can't find a more sort of permanent fixture in in Brazil. You would think, you know, it's it, forty. There's like, yeah, but there's like five billion clubs in Brazil. Yeah. <laughs> there must be some reason for him going out there. Yeah, well, he, he said the language actually was one of the reasons why, because obviously they speak. Yeah, Portuguese. of course. Maybe yeah. he's just got the travel bug. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I don't know. Um, but Spanish football expert um, John Carlin summed up uh, Rivaldo quite nicely when he stated back in the day that Rivaldo combines to dazzling effect the two essential qualities of the ideal footballer: artistry and efficiency. Yeah, and with that, I mean, he's coming into the Zoom at all. Come on in, Rivaldo.